In this video, we'll be concentrating on discrete probability distributions, specifically the binomial distribution and the Poisson distribution. Now, this video will be a little bit different from previous videos in that we are not going to be utilizing pre-existing tasks in SAS Studio. We'll actually be running some SAS programs, but don't worry, you don't have to write one line of code to figure out these problems. It's as simple as replacing some values and running the program and analyzing the results. So let's start with the binomial probability distribution. On my screen, I have some questions using the binomial probability distribution. Let's say that 80% of all business startups in the IT industry report that they generate a profit in their first year. So if a sample of 30 new IT business startups is selected, find the following probabilities. So first of all, I know this is a binomial probability because I have two pieces of data. I have the probability of a success, which is 0 0.80 or 80%, and the number of trials, in this case, 30. So I know based on that data, I'll be working with the binomial probability distribution. All right, so in order to figure out this problem, I need to use a pre-created SAS program that is stored here in SAS Studio. In order to access that, I'm not going to be using the tasks and utilities menu. Instead, I'll go to server files and folders, then drill down to my shared file links, msla1, and SAS progs. You'll notice in the SAS progs folder, you have multiple programs. For this problem, we'll be using the binomial probability program. So let's open that program by double clicking on it. You'll notice in all of these programs, there are comments telling you exactly what you should do. So for example, on line 13, the program asks you to set the number of trials and the probability of a success. So below, right now we have trials set at 25. We wanna change that to 30. And we have a probability of success of 0.45, which we wanna to change to 0.8. And that's all it takes. You now can run the program and use the results to answer your questions. So to run the program, I click the picture of the running man and I get my answers in a binomial table. So in my output here, you will notice that I have three distinct columns. The first is the number of successes, the second is the binomial probability, and the third is the cumulative binomial probability. You will learn how we use this output as we go along answering our questions. So let's go back to the questions and let's check the first one. So we need to find the probability that exactly 20 will generate a profit in their first year. So I go back to my output, I go down to 20 successes, and because we're looking for an exact number of successes, I will use the binomial probability column. So we simply read the answer here, and it's a probability of approximately 0.035. Great, let's take a look at the next question. What is the probability that 22 or fewer will generate a profit in their first year? So we go back to our output, we go down to 22 successes. And in this case, we want to know the probability of 22 or fewer, not just exactly 22. So we don't wanna use this first value. Now, the third column shows the probability of a certain number of successes or less. So for example, in this row here for 22, the value 0 0.23921 is the probability that you will have 22 or fewer successes. So that's exactly the value we want. So in our case, the probability of 22 or fewer successes is 0 0.239, if we're rounding. Great, let's go to the next. The next question asks the probability that fewer than 18 will generate a profit in their first year. So we go back to the results. Now we want the probability that there are fewer than 18. So if we were to go down to 18 successes and look over to the third column, that would be giving us the probability of 18 or less. So we don't want that. We want fewer than 18. Another way of saying fewer than 18 is 17 or less. 
So we just go to the previous row. And in this case, the probability is 0.00311, or rounded 0 0.003. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. We want the probability that 20 or more will generate a profit in their first year. So 20 or more. Let's go back to the results. Now we don't have a column for greater than or greater than or equal to, so we'll have to do some basic math. So we want 20 or more. So what don't we want? We don't want 19 or less. So if we take the complement of 19 or less, we should get the right answer. So first, let's find the value of 19 or fewer. And if we go down to 19, we go over to the third column, the value is 0 0.02562. If we take the complement of that, which is 1 minus that, we get approximately 0.974. And let's take a look at the last one. We want the probability that more than 25 will generate a profit. So we go back to our binomial probability, and we want more than 25. So that means we don't want 25 or fewer. So if we go down here, we take a look at 25 or fewer, and that gives us 0 0.74477. We take the complement of that, and we find that to be 0.255. All right, so that takes care of our binomial probability distribution. All right, now let's take a look at the Poisson probability distribution. So let's read the question. The mean number of bacteria per milliliter of a liquid is known to be six. Find the probability that in one milliliter of the liquid, there will be the following number of bacteria. All right, so just like we had in binomial, we know this is a Poisson probability problem because the only data we're given is the mean number of occurrences, or lambda, which in this case is 6. So we know that's going to be our lambda value. All right, so just like we did in binomial, there's also a program for Poisson. So under SAS progs, you're going to want to double click on the Poisson probability program. On line 13, you'll notice the comment that asks you to set the number of occurrences and the mean number of occurrences, or lambda. Now it just so happens that lambda is already set to six, so we don't have to change this value. As far as the number of occurrences, you want to pick some high value that is greater than whatever the number of occurrences you're looking for are. So for example, if I go back to my program, you notice that the highest number I'm looking for here is 10. We have five, 10, eight, four, and nine. So 10 or 12 would be just fine for that number of occurrences. In my case, I have it set to 50, and that's not going to hurt anything at all. So feel free, as long as this number is high enough, or at least higher than the value you're looking for, you'll be in good shape. So I'll keep mine at 50. So I'll go ahead and run this program. And this output should look really familiar to you. It looks just like the binomial output. And in fact, you read the output table in exactly the same way that you read the binomial probability table. So let's go back to the program and check our first question. So the first question is, what is the probability that there will be exactly five bacteria? Well, we know how to answer that question. So we go back to our output, we go down to exactly five, and we go to the first column here for Poisson probability because we, have, we wanna know the exact probability of five. And here it is going to be 0 0.161 if we're rounding. All right, 10 or fewer bacteria. Go to the output. 10 or fewer is going to be in the 10th row. And we notice we use the last column because this is, remember, less than or equal to is in this column. So 10 or fewer is going to be approximately 0 0.957. Fewer than eight bacteria. So if you remember, when we go to the output and we want fewer than eight, if we were to use this value on the eighth row, 0.84724, that would give us eight or fewer. We don't want that. We want fewer than eight. And another way of saying that is seven or fewer. And that value is 
7.44 if we're rounding. All right, so for the next question, we want to know what is the probability of four or more bacteria? So we go back to the output and we want four or more. So that means we don't want three or fewer. So if we go to three or fewer, that's 0 0.15120. And we know to get four or more, we just have to take the complement of that. So one minus 0 0.15120 is approximately 0.849 for rounding. All right, last one, more than nine bacteria. So if we go to the output, we want more than nine bacteria. So that means we don't want nine or fewer. So the value for nine or fewer is 0 0.91608. And the complement to that is 0 0.084. So it's as easy as that. As long as you know how to set the values in the programs, run the program, and read the correct output from the tables, you can easily answer discrete probability questions. The key here is to get practice with reading those tables. It can be a little bit tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's very simple to answer these questions. Thanks for watching.